Motion tile and CC repetile are both found underneath the stylized category, and they're used to repeat and create patterns out of whatever you apply them to. So if we search for motion tile and apply that to my logo here, nothing happens at first. But if I go to output width and expand that out, you can see that that's going to give me duplicates horizontally. And if I change the output height, it's gonna give me duplicates vertically. So let me just scale this down so we can see a lot more of these copies. This output width and height is basically a percentage. So if I wanted 500% on both directions, I'll just type those in and now I have five across, five up and down, and I can kind of scale that to fit my comp. But we also have this tile width and tile height. So if I left this a layer originally at 100%, I could actually scale this down by changing my tile width from 100 to say 50% on the width and the height. Or if I wanted even smaller, I could say 20% on the width and height. And now I have a lot more copies. No scaling of the layer necessary. I also have a tile center control, which just allows me to offset the center of the tile. I'm gonna reset that. And then I have a mirror edges checkbox, which is mirroring every instance of this tile around the center point. And we can kind of spot those center points of tile just by finding the ones that have the correct orientation. Let's scale this back up to about 50% so we can see more copies of it. And I'll turn mirror edges off. Next, we have this phase control, which allows you to shift every other column. So if I went to say 180 degrees, then we've got this nice honeycomb pattern basically. We can also change this to be a horizontal phase shift rather than vertical phase shift. And you can see how that's shifting the rows rather than the columns. I could really quickly turn this into an animated tile if I just set a keyframe on the phase, set a keyframe on the tile center, and then go forward say two seconds, and I'll change my phase to two revolutions and 180 degrees, and I'll change my tile center to zero on the X axis, and now I'll press U to bring up those keyframes, and I should have this offset rows animation happening now. If I play this back, we've got a very cool looking repeating pattern. And whatever you apply this to will be tiled. So this could be a pre-comp with animation happening in it. Really simple to work with, but creates a really cool looking effect. Now let's take a look at CC Repetile. I'm gonna type that in, Repetile, bring that onto the effect. And that, once again, nothing happens by default. But if I look at my controls, I have expand right, left, down, and up. These are actually pixel values, they're not percentages. So this a copy of my logo is 1080 by 1080. So in order to duplicate this, I need to type in 1080 in all directions. So that's a little bit different than motion tile. If I scale this logo down and just really crank these up so I have a whole bunch of copies, I'm just arbitrarily scaling this up, then we can take a look at some of the more unique controls that Repetile has to offer. Under the tiling category, I can change this from repeat, which just gives me a bunch of duplicates, to say the last version, which is brick. And this gives us a very similar honeycomb looking effect. But we also have all of these other options like checker flip horizontal or checker flip vertical. You can play around with these and have some really interesting results. There's even a random version that will just give you completely different rotations for every single copy. The last thing we have is blend borders. And this isn't very useful for this particular application. So let me just really quickly make a new solid layer. Layer, new solid. I'm going to make it 500 pixels by 500 pixels and apply an effect called fractal noise just to give it some texture. Then I'll apply CC Repetile, expand it out in all directions and you can clearly see the seam between each instance of this effect. But with the blend borders effect, it allows me to feather out and blend each tile into each other, which makes it a lot harder to notice. Now you can obviously still see those repeating patterns, but if I change this from just repeating the tiles to say rosette, then it's a little bit more randomized. Or if I actually go to random, then we're going to get something that looks a lot less uniform. And I can play around with that blend borders amount to get something that looks a lot less repeated. But that's everything you need to know about Motion Tile and CC Repetile. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all of that stuff in the description of this video.